Hey everyone, it's Paul here from Groove 3 and welcome to this video tutorial series on Reason 10 production tips and tricks. Unlike my other videos, this is going to be more of a mixed bag of tricks, workflow ideas and techniques that I've personally come to find useful, rather than focusing on a single piece of music. So hopefully there's going to be a little something in here for everyone. Let's start with Kong and some interesting ways in which it can be used. So by now most of you are probably very familiar with the Kong drum designer, and specifically its drum synthesis modules which can be used to create um, quite a good range of analog style drum sounds ranging from kind of 909s and 808s uh, and that kind of thing, in addition to the sample player and rex player as well. Now because these modules are quite compact, the feature set is somewhat limited. So if you want to get really crazy into sound design for your drum sounds, um, there's only really so far that you can go using the built-in modules. Thankfully, it's really easy to build your own synthesis-based kits in Reason, using Kong as the kind of nerve center to trigger various different instruments. So to begin with, um, I'm going to go to Utilities and drag in a Combinator. Next, I'll add a Line Mixer, and then we'll go back to Instruments, and this time I'm going to shift and drag Kong into the Combinator. Now the reason I do that is to prevent any automatic patching between the main audio output of Kong and the audio input of the Line Mixer, as we won't actually be using any sound from Kong itself. What we will be using are these gate outputs. Now every instrument in Reason will have a gate input as well as a note input, and that extends to rack extensions and VSTs as well. So it really opens up uh, an amazing number of possibilities in terms of sound design for your drums. For this example though, I'm just gonna use the subtractor. So I'll begin by adding one for the kick, one for the snare, and we'll say a third one for a hi-hat. Next, I'll take the gate output of pads one, three, and seven. And the reason I'm using these pads in particular is that they correspond to the typical GM mapping where you have the kick and snare on C and D, and then the hi-hat on F sharp. But obviously you can use any pads that you like. Now if I press a key on my keyboard, um, you'll hear that everything is being triggered all at once, which is obviously not what I want. To fix that, I can go to the programmer for the combinator, and then I'll go to each of these subtractors in turn and just disable receive notes. And now each cell is gonna trigger one subtractor at a time. Now obviously you could design your own synth drum patches if you're particularly good at that kind of thing, uh, but most synths will include a percussion or drum folder uh, with a number of kicks, snares, hi-hats and so on, just to kind of get you started. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'll press browse, and then uh, there's actually a percussion folder in the subtractor factory sound bank. So we'll use butcher kick, um, and then I'll just load in any snare at random, and then a hi-hat sound. Of course, the benefit of using something like Subtractor over one of the built-in synthesis modules in Kong is that you have access to a full set of synthesizer features, such as LFOs, filters, modulation envelopes, and so on. Now, as I mentioned earlier, um, every synth in Reason is gonna have this gate and CV input section. So I could take something like the grain sample manipulator and replace the snare drum. I should also mention that when you drag in a new instrument, it's gonna reset the receive notes setting to its default state. So you just need to go back up and untick that. Next, I can go to the drum supply and we'll go snare drums. And then I'll just pick something from roughly halfway down the list. And then from here, I can set the playback mode to one shot, give myself a drum style envelope uh, that doesn't require me to hold the key down, and then just increase the volume a little bit as well. And now from here, I have full access to the uh, feature set of grain within the context of my drum kit. So I can start to do things like introduce some uh, time stretching, as well as experiment with uh, the various different granular algorithms. So this is a really cool setup, um, especially if you feel that your sample library is tapped out and you just keep going back to the same old sounds. 
chances are you've got hundreds, maybe even more, uh, of percussive and drum patches in the synths that you already own. So this is just another way to get a bit more mileage um, out of the instruments that you already have, rather than just endlessly searching for new samples. Now, of course, if you wanted to add effects to this kit, there's a couple of ways you could do it. Um, anything that you drag in underneath the mixer will be created as a send effect. So for example, I could drag in a reverb and then add it to my snare. I can also drag devices in directly underneath each of the synths, um, which will then be inserted in between the synth and the mixer. Or alternatively, um, if you want to do all of your mixing in the SSL section, then you would simply just disconnect each of the synths from the line mixer. Um, and then I could just go ahead and create three mix channels and then just manually patch these uh, to the input of the mix channels. So now I've got access to the insert effects section of the SSL strip, as well as being able to use um, global send effects that can be shared by the entire project. You've also got the built-in EQ section, as well as dynamics processing and filtering. One thing that's worth mentioning uh, is that depending on which method you use, um, anything that's inside the combinator will be stored when you reload the patch, whereas external connections aren't stored. So it really just depends on how you prefer to work. So for instance, if I was to save and recall this patch, I would simply need to just recreate three mix channels again uh, and manually connect them. Let's break here and then explore some other production tricks in the next video.